Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Happy Monday. Things are already popping. Okay, it's a spicy video, so you might want to grab a little bit of water or some sort of beverage to cool things off, because, oh my goodness, Nintendo responded. And they don't do this, but they're talking Switch Pro, Switch OLED pricing, and it got a little sticky, so we got to discuss exactly that. Plus, Metroid Prime is back in the news, and some people got a Switch game extra early, and it wasn't illegal. In fact, it wasn't even hard. In fact, it was so darn easy. Make sure to hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments down below about what Nintendo is saying here. It seems like they're throwing down the gauntlet and their target is pretty obvious, but is something else going on? We're gonna find out. First, I wanna say thanks to my friends at Lexar because they are back sponsoring Good Morning Mario once again in July. You know, I love these guys. They're pretty cool over there and they make a fantastic play card, which is the best, fastest memory card for your Nintendo Switch. It's gonna help you hold all your games. It goes up to one terabyte, which takes your entire library and keeps it safe and snug. So make sure to click the link in the description down below. They've also got a great deal right now on flash drives, 25% off on Amazon. And if you click the link in the description, it will automatically give you the coupon and automatically gets you some of these for a very good price. Now let's start things off with Square Enix, who was quite awesome this weekend. Or maybe just one giant mess, because they gave their games out extra early by accident. Neo The World Ends With You releases on July 27th, which by my wristwatch is still eight days away. And yet if you pre-order from the Square Enix store this weekend, they sent you a download code that worked. So fans got to play the game 10 days early and they still are getting their physical pre-orders sent to them? This was obviously a huge gaffe from Square Enix, but a huge win for players who were quick. They since have closed the loophole and some super sneaky dudes and dudettes were trying to cancel their order because they got the code, cancel the physical, get a refund, but Square said, no dice, you redeem the code, you're gonna get two copies, which is a huge win and you get to play it early, but you can't take our money. This is just a really interesting occurrence where an online system was on the fritz and caused a game to leak, but just totally by the company. We've seen leaks where they accidentally post a tweet or accidentally reveal a game early. Rarely do we see a company accidentally give out their game in such a way. Now, I might have been lucky enough to grab one myself, but out of respect, I'm gonna talk about the game at a later date. Let me know in the comments down below if you were able to grab it, and if you plan on playing Neo The World Ends With You next week. Now, before we get to Nintendo's killing blow, let's talk about a bounty hunter who's waiting for action. Samus Aran is back this October with Metroid Dread, but there's another Metroid game that has been trending as of late, Metroid Prime Trilogy on Switch. And people were up in arms because Jeff Grubb said, oh, it's done. Nintendo's just making you wait. And people were like, Z-O-M-G, whoa! But what's really going on here? Because this isn't the first time we've heard that Metroid Prime Trilogy is done in the oven. In fact, back in 2019, Imran Khan, who at the time was the senior editor of Game Informer, said the exact same thing. He said, Metroid Prime Trilogy is done and Nintendo's holding it. And they probably want it to be a marketing note for Metroid Prime 4, which we still haven't seen anything for. And we kind of know that Nintendo does this, right? It was heavily rumored that Pikmin 3 Deluxe was done for a long time, and then they saved it to put it out. And that makes sense, right? Nintendo might be holding these ports for a time they need them. And especially during the pandemic, that makes even more sense. Save it for an unexpected delay and still keep your schedule on track. Well, even Jeff Grubb himself said, hey, I didn't say anything new. Although he did kind of make one new tweak, which is that QA at Nintendo apparently has been way behind and harder to get finished. And that's because of the pandemic, they're struggling to apparently complete games and make sure that they're all ready, eddy to go. I don't know that that's why Metroid Prime Trilogy isn't out though. I really believe it's more that latter point about saving it for closer to Metroid Prime 4. And since that game is still a notable ways out there, it only makes sense that Nintendo would try to line these things up, right? Maybe release Metroid Prime Trilogy, I don't know, six months before Metroid Prime 4. And again, trusting my handy wristwatch, there ain't no Metroid Prime 4 in six months. So do I think Metroid Prime Trilogy is coming to Switch? Yes. Do I think it's because of Jeff Grubb's new report? No. I do find it interesting though that Nintendo just sits on certain games and has them either almost done or fully done and then is ready to shoot them off 
whenever they see fit. It kind of feels unfair as a fan, like, dude, if you're done, we want to play it. But you got to remember, this is all part of mastermind marketing and big business plans, which brings us to our next story, the big one. Nintendo stepping to the mountaintop, Pride Rock, if you will, and shouting down to the animal kingdom below, you are wrong. Now, guys and girls, buckle up, because this one is really weird. Nintendo normally ignores all this stuff. In fact, most companies ignore all this stuff. If someone writes a scathing article, or someone gives a bad review, or someone makes a bogus report, you typically just let it go. But today, Nintendo decided to issue a response from their official Japanese HQ, letting people know that Bloomberg was wrong. This might feel like supreme vindication for those of you that always believed Bloomberg was wrong. You're like, dude, that Blomiborg, they never knew what they're talking about. Thank you, Nintendo, for putting them in their place. All them Switch Pro rumors, which I understand, okay? I really get it. Like, it's a mic drop moment. But given that this is a new show, let me break it down in a couple of parts for you. First off, they responded to both Switch OLED and Switch Pro. So let me give you the full quote. A news report on July 15th, 2021 claimed that the profit margin of the Nintendo Switch OLED model would increase compared to the Nintendo Switch. Now, this was where Bloomberg said, hey, that Switch OLED only costs 10 bones more. So Nintendo, they raking in 40 extra dollars off y'all's wallets. Nintendo continues to ensure correct understanding among our investors and customers. We want to make clear that that claim is incorrect. Now, incorrect. Well, Bloomberg clearly is wrong, but how wrong are they? And here's where I want to bring up why Nintendo would do this, okay? Nintendo, they know that they are industry leaders. They know that they're making a ton of money. They know they don't have to respond, but I believe they did because Bloomberg is such an official source, right? They speak to a clientele of people that are more involved in the business side of things, and Nintendo does have investors to worry about. And investors were clearly worried after the Switch OLED because things went down. And I think with all the rumors and hype around Switch Pro, investors were probably bummed that Nintendo did something that wasn't that exciting. Then you saw that Steam Deck and people were probably like, oh my gosh, Nintendo, you could have made magic. And instead you made OLED. And you made people mad or at least bummed. I mean, Nintendo's position after announcing a new model should be up. And I think they would have been better off just not announcing it at all, at least from a lot of fans' perspective. The other reason, which I think is a little less likely but still could be plausible, is maybe they're licking their wounds a little bit. Maybe they feel backed up a bit and like, hey, everybody's saying all this bad stuff about us and that we're taking advantage of customers and that we didn't do the right thing. Let us correct the record and set things straight. And maybe they thought this was an opportunity where they needed to do this. I'll tell you this much, they did it for business reasons. They didn't do it because their feelings were hurt and they didn't do it because they were pissed off at Bloomberg. They did it because they need to do certain things to appease investors and to make sure that their numbers and their profits do work out how they intend. It's a very odd situation and we'll never know the exact reason why Nintendo did issue this. But I do like what David Gibson said. Now, David Gibson is an analyst, and he said, of course Nintendo would say that. We are talking small money anyways. But I still think it helps like Bloomberg wrote. Now, the second half of this is, of course, about Switch Pro. And Nintendo's comment here was much more concise. They stated, we also want to clarify that we just announced that Nintendo's Switch OLED model will launch in October 2021. Facts. And have no plans for launching any other model at this time. Now, some have interpreted this as a punch to the mouth for Bloomberg. Like they're reeling in pain because Nintendo just unleashed their KO. And Bloomberg was the main hub for Switch Pro rumors. They're the ones who were saying 2021, 4K DLSS, bigger screen, all that mumbo jumbo that made a bunch of you mad. So maybe this is Nintendo just closing that door, shutting it down. But I gotta tell you, Nintendo has said this before. They said it many times, okay? They even said it before the Switch OLED model. Remember when they said, we have no plans for any models. We're not working on anything. We solemnly swear and hope you believe us because that's what a company does. They just announce a brand new console. They're not about to say, oh yeah, we're also working on another one. Now I'm not here to speculate or guess when or what a Switch Pro might be. No, we're done with that for now. But I do believe Nintendo 
is just saying what they need to say. Okay, they probably are shutting down some of the fervor around Switch Pro, but they're also giving you the same verbiage that they've always given you. So this is as much a response to Bloomberg as it is just the things that companies say when they announce something new and fans are hoping for something more. Now, I believe that Nintendo would say this whether a Switch Pro will never exist or whether one was coming out in just a month's time. We know that they have openly denied plans mere weeks before things got announced. So you can't really take any of this at face value anymore, it seems like rumors, official comments, we just have to wait. And maybe that's the best course of action. Just wait and see what happens. Nintendo has a pretty big fall season. There's a lot of fun games. Metroid is coming in dread. So hey, Trilogy, it'll get there. The OLED, if you want it, you can get it. If not, it's unnecessary. A Switch Pro, maybe one day, but it'll get there. I am curious about your take though. So let me know in the comments why you think Nintendo decided to issue this statement. Why did they decide to call out Bloomberg and say, nah, you're incorrect. And do you really believe that they've got nothing planned for the future? Let me know. You also let me know what you're thinking in today's poll. And I love to read these. So make sure to check the community tab every evening. That's where you'll find the poll. Turn those notifications on, ring that bell, and here we go. I said, you can have one of these for free, but then you can't get the other. So which would you pick? And it was either a Nintendo Switch OLED or a newfangled Steam Deck. And I was shocked by how close this was. There's some diehard Nintendo dudes and dudettes on this team because 40% of you said the Switch OLED, which blew my mind because by all accounts, most of you have Switches. So this would be getting a slightly improved Switch over a sexy Steam Deck, which I gotta say, I'm just smitten with. Mm. The idea of playing all those games on that portable, even if the buttons are slipping off like some sort of spooky painting, I still think this thing is going to be sick. I picked Steam Deck with 60%, but hey, I'm also eager to try out the Switch OLED and see if it does make me any happier while playing Nintendo games. And I've got a lot to play this week, so I'm going to go do that. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. I love you. If your week feels like it's starting off slow, deep breath reset think of five things you're grateful for try it again you can do this i believe in you i love you a lot and until next time stay safe stay healthy stay happy stay positive out there switch force out